Okay, so here's an iPhone 7 here. Uh, this is still a good phone. Uh, I'm making this video in uh, February, mid February of uh, 2021. Uh, so this is still a relevant phone. Uh, they just need new batteries. They serve the purpose of many users. It's a uh, low cost option for a lot of people to just replace their battery. Uh, the phone just works just fine. Uh, but that all depends on what people do with the phone. So this one is going to be reconditioned and sold. Uh, the market value right now of these is about 150 bucks or so. Uh, that depends on the carrier. This one was a Verizon phone, so it's a Verizon, uh, I believe 64 gig. I know it's 32 gig, so not the biggest one. But, uh, you know, not that many people need tons of storage to store 20,000 photos or whatever it is. So this is my process of reconditioning these phones. This one has been relatively well taken care of. It's lived in a case its whole life. It's actually owned by a pretty popular artist here in Denver. But uh, it's just dirty, that's all. It's got makeup in the ear speaker mesh. The uh, speaker mesh and the microphone mesh are all dirty. So all we're gonna do before we work on it is take some isopropyl alcohol. We'll turn it off first. So this is 99% isopropyl alcohol. We keep it in these little things little dispensers. So we'll just clean it off. And you want to do this with the phone off, even though this alcohol evaporates pretty quickly. Uh, it can still bridge circuits if it gets in there. So I just use an old toothbrush and uh, sometimes stuff doesn't come off very well, so you just use a razor blade and scratch off all the whatever's on there. These phones are the dirtiest things in our lives. Not too many people are cleaning them off on a regular basis. You see people with the newer ones, they think they're waterproof and they run them under a sink which is definitely not advisable they're not waterproof they're water resistant and uh that water resistance works pretty good but it's not something you want to rely on you definitely don't want to be running it under the sink so i go around the screen this one's got a nice screen protector on it so we'll just leave it on there it's like one of the most valuable things you can do to protect your device is to use a, it's called a tempered glass screen protector. So that's just hardened glass, piece of hardened glass, just like the windshield in your car. And I accidentally turned it on there, so I'm gonna turn it back off. But um, yeah, tempered glass is designed to take any uh, impact damage when you drop it on rocks or on tile or anything like that and break instead of the screen. So like for example, uh, our promo price right now to replace the screen on one of these is, it's only $89, but uh, you know, if you have a 10, 15, $20 tempered glass screen protector on there, you're gonna save yourself a bunch of money. So you can see here, lint gets into these 
charging ports, a big old chunk of lint there. And it's just from keeping it in, keep it in your pocket. It happens naturally, but then when you plug it in, uh, it's just compacting that lint. So that's a pretty easy little maintenance thing, a little, little tip to show you why uh, you'll see people like wrapping their charging cords around their phone or like propping something up underneath the charge board. So we just take these called needle nose cat claw uh, tweezers that are ESP safe. Uh, but you can use like a paper clip or something. And, uh, you just have to be careful you don't touch the tops or the bottoms because the charger connects on both sides. So there's power connections and data connections there. So it's like a game of operation from, uh, from the 80s. Clean it out there, dig it all out. And then we'll just let that dry for a second. You can use uh, the 99% isopropyl alcohol is uh, not the easiest thing to find, especially nowadays with uh, COVID going on. Uh, but even in non-pandemic times, uh, it's kind of a specialty item, this stuff that you're gonna find uh, at Walgreens or Walmart or Target, or whatever, uh, is gonna be more like 70%, I think. Uh, which just means there's more uh, water in it. So even more important with that lower, lower grade stuff that you turn the phone off before you do this. And there's some gunk there around the home button. We'll just scrape that out. It be nice and clean because we're going to try to give it a new life and give her a new user. So the batteries, batteries are good for, uh, they're rated for so many cycles, but uh, nobody keeps track of that. We, uh, focus on the years that the thing is a viable device. So this phone, I think, uh, I don't know, right off the top of my head, but iPhone 7, I think is about four years old or so, maybe even five, I don't know. But uh, the batteries are usually good for about two to three years, depending on how, many, how much you use your phone, so. We go ahead and get into it here and replace the battery. We use uh, it's called Amp Centrix batteries uh, from our supplier for the iPhone 7. And this one, let's see, let's see what the battery percentage is. So typically, we get calls uh, and people wanting to replace their batteries when the battery health gets down. Uh, into the 80s, like the mid 80s. So Apple's software uh, keeps track of that and you can actually check it. Uh, but what that means is, so when the, the, when the battery is brand new, you can charge 100% of it. But as time goes on, uh, you can charge less and less of it. So even though it says 100% up here on the, uh, you know, the battery uh, indicator, um, that could be 100% of like 90% of the battery or 100% of 80% of the battery. And then when it gets so low, then uh, the iOS software will just say service the battery. So to see that, you just go into settings and then scroll down to battery. And right here's what we're looking for, battery health. So this one is at 83%. Um, so the user, the last user of this phone wasn't complaining about it. They don't use their phone very much. Uh, they're elderly and, uh, you know, they probably just let it sit on the counter on the charger all the time. Uh, but you know, if you're out and about working, whatever, 83% is going to get you through like, you know, most of the day, but you know, by the time you get off work, you're going to be wanting to charge your phone or you know, when you get home, you want to look at your phone, it's 
probably going to need charged. So uh, we got some specialty tools here. Uh, this phone and uh, most other iPhones, well, all our iPhones really. Uh, they have two little screws down here on each side of the charging port. Uh, these are called pentalobe screws. So that means it has five lobes on the uh, driver. And uh, it's kind of a specialty thing that Apple does to uh, try to prevent people from working on their own phones, which is not advisable. Uh, always let somebody that knows what they're doing, not your, your nephew or your IT guy in the family who uh, doesn't do this all the time. So once we get that, we have like this little metal card that we use uh, to get in between the uh, frame and the screen assembly. And so that's super helpful. Uh, we've got our ESD safe cat claw needle nose tweezers. Uh, and then we have uh, what's called a tri wing screw. So that just means there's three lobes on the screw. And then we use these, these are called uh, black sticks, is what Apple calls them. We just call them spudgers. And so this will help us get up the connections uh, so that we can replace the screen or replace the battery. So there is some technique to this. Um, you can't just go crazy on it. You have to make sure that. Uh, you know, when you put these little micro screwdrivers into the screw heads that you've actually, you can feel that it's got a grip and then the, you know, the tops spin. So you can either put your finger on it or put it into your palm and still spin the driver. And so this is something that uh, is kind of an acquired skill. Uh, if you go too hard on it and work too quickly, then you'll strip the screws out and we have methods to get strip screws out, back them out, but uh, it's frustrating, time consuming. Uh, it's a lot better to just take your time and do it the right way the first time. So I like to say that patience is the main tool over all these little tools. Uh, you just have to be patient. And even when you're incredibly experienced, uh, you still don't want to rush. Uh, that's when we make mistakes and mistakes can be costly uh, or damaging to the device. And uh, we don't want to do that. So you'll see as I go on here, I lay the screws out. This is a magnetic mat. So, um, uh, my service, we go to our customers and we fix phones just about anywhere. Uh, so I might be on the, the patio at a restaurant or, uh, you know, in somebody's office or at their dining room or kitchen table. Or a lot of times we just do the repair in our vehicle, especially now with uh, COVID. So we can practice good social distancing. But, uh, but anyways, yeah. So now we get the, uh, the two bottom screws out. And so we need to find an entry point. So on different phones, uh, there are sensitive areas. And so like for the iPhone 7, uh, we have a sensitive area right here because this home button has a flex cable that goes right under here. So if we get this uh, metal card in too far, we could damage that and uh, brick the home button, uh, the connectors for the screen and the, uh, the, the digitizer, the part that senses your touch, are over here, and so we don't want to get it too far in. Motherboard's all up and down here. Uh, the battery's right around here, so we don't want to get this card too far in and damage something. It just needs just the edge of it, and so we start here on the bottom left corner, and you could fit it right in there. Now there is a adhesive seal that goes all around this screen uh, and helps with a little bit of water resistance and 
to keep the screen down so that the uh, this model has what's called 3D touch where you can just press down on an app and it'll show you like a preview. So what we do is just get it open and use our black spludger and we can go around or I mean usually I I just use the card get it under there get it in the corner and lift up and important to note that uh, everything you see me doing here I'm doing firmly but gently so you don't want to be too aggressive with it especially we don't want to break this screen this is a good screen it's an original Apple screen so it's superior to like aftermarket screens which if you get one crack in them you could potentially lose touch functionality you can see here I've got got it open uh, we don't want to open it too far because there's flex cables uh, that we don't want to break you can see those right here and you can see how close they are to the frame and where I was working there. And so once we have it open like this, I'll just hold it in my left hand and you can kind of wiggle it a little bit to break the, the seal up here. I usually just use my card and run it along up here gently. And we're basically just gonna pop this off like, you know, a millimeter or something so I kind of lever it under the corners there we go so now the phone is open and you can see the adhesive is still stuck here uh, so I'm just gonna break that off just run my spudger down through it you can also just open the phone and it'll come open so now we get the phone open. Uh, you can see we have to be very gentle because this uh, flex cable here, it connects the ear speaker and uh, there's multiple uh, sensors on here. So we have a proximity sensor that uh, turns the screen off when you hold it up to your head. That way you're not uh, pressing buttons with your cheek. Uh, there's also an ambient light sensor that uh, brightens the phone if you take it into the sun or darkens the, the screen uh, you know if you take it into a dark room you don't need the brightness to be turned up all the way uh, so that saves your battery and uh, saves your eyes a little bit and so yeah let's go ahead and disassemble the phone here so we've got two uh, shields and so these serve a couple different functions it helps to just keep the connectors down and uh, on the iPhone 7, it's our TriWin bit that uh, has TriWin screws in here. And these screws are all different sizes. So they're either gonna be mounted to the uh, motherboard itself or they're mounted into the housing of the phone. So the ones that are mounted into the housing of the phone, they are longer. So if we were to put a longer screw into a board mount uh, receiver, then we could damage the phone. So you can see here, I'm laying out the screws just as they came out of the phone. And so once I get the screws out of there, pop that off. Um, it's usually connected to the battery connector and we just set it down right there, right like it came out of the phone. So that disconnected the battery itself. Uh, if that doesn't happen, this is one of the most important things you can do when working on a phone. You have to disconnect the power. And so with the iPhone 7, you can you can trace the, the uh, flex cable out of the bottom of the battery. This is your battery here. And up and just disconnect it. So uh, extremely important to note that um, if you were to look at this board, this is the motherboard here, it runs from here all the way up to here and then over. Uh, if you were to look at this under a microscope, there are hundreds of little um, resistors and capacitors and chips and everything that uh, you could potentially knock off the board. 
So when you disconnect the connection, you just get the very, very tip of the connector and just flip it up. You don't want to dig. Uh, that could cause you a lot of headache. So now we need to remove the ear speaker flex. So on the iPhone 7, this one just has two Phillips. Uh, this is a Phillips uh, triple zero screwdriver. And we just back those out and I set them up here. And you can see as I lay them out, I leave some space between the battery connector screws and the ear speaker. plate connector screws or whatever you call them. Uh, so this is something that uh, might be a little controversial between my peers here, but I use, and this is just old school methods. Uh, this is how I learned. I just use my cat claws to get into this one as well. Uh, some technicians use fingernails or whatever but I find it's easier to get the ear speaker flex off just with these cat claws. So now we can remove our screen and we'll just uh, set that to the side. And we need to remove our battery. So the battery is kept in with these strips here. So these strips are kind of like, um, there are these like 3M hooks, which you might be familiar with, that uh, you can hang your pictures around your house with. And when you take those off, when you pull the adhesive off, it like stretches out real far. Well, these do the same thing and that's how they come out. And so uh, what I like to do is remove, uh, this is the part that makes the phone vibrate here. It's called the taptic engine. So like when you're pressing the home button, that's what's, what's making the vibration or you know, if you get a call or a text message, that's what's actually vibrating. It's this Taptic engine. And so to take that out, we've got two screws here on this retainer bracket. And I'll set these off to the side. Anytime I'm doing uh, like deeper repairs to a phone, I'll set screws out like kind of in order. So, you know, it's kind of like the phone's like larger here. I'll set these out so that I can reference where they came out of uh, until you can, you know, get good and memorize where the screws come from, uh, know what they look like and what sizes go where. But still, it's good practice just to lay them out kind of in order here. So we got three screws for the Taptic engine. And then there's a little connector here. So we just take our black spudger and pop that off and remove the Taptic engine and just put it right under there. So to get the battery adhesive out, uh, which it's very important at this point to note that these batteries are, uh, they're called sealed lithium ion batteries. And so there's a cover that goes around them, this black cover. And on these aftermarket ones, you can kind of see uh, a little bit better that they're sealed here and so if these are charged up uh, or even if they're not charged very much at all uh, if you were to stab this or cut it with something or bend it too much um, the thing can literally explode uh, fire goes everywhere smoke goes everywhere uh, it's toxic fumes and so we got to be very 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 careful uh, when we replace these batteries it's extremely important to take your time and not bend them too much or not bend them all if you can avoid it uh, but these these adhesives uh, you have to be very gentle and patient when you're pulling them out because uh, if they snap they'll go underneath the battery and then you gotta kind of dig them out and uh, that's pretty risky but uh, sometimes it has to be done uh, sometimes if they go all the way under there you have to like pry the battery a little bit we have these the like bigger, thicker um, plastic cards that we can kind of pry the battery out. And so the way I get started, I use my 
tweezers and just start to get the adhesive up and then you can just roll it with your finger here so I'll do that to both tabs uh, they're protected by these black stickers and so just roll it with my finger here and then with these older ones uh, the batteries actually have a uh, a little board on the bottom with a couple chips on that and the purpose of that is so that uh, the uh, motherboard has chips on it as well to sense you know how much charge the battery has what the battery life is and so those are uh, protected with black stickers as well and so sometimes these older phones the adhesive gets stuck to those black stickers and you have to use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to uh, release that that uh, adhesion but uh, we'll just go ahead and press on with it so I just grab these with the back of my tweezers until I can pinch it with my fingers and then see how it stretches there so I'm gonna be very careful because I don't want that to snap back in and the best way is to just grab it Put out an inch, grab it, put out an inch, grab it, and that way it doesn't rip. If you were to just pull it, you know, pull it out, it could rip and cause you a lot of headache. So that one came out nice. Go ahead with this one as well. And do the same thing. Some technicians use their black spudger and wrap it around and then just twist it up and pull it out like that. Uh, this is a quicker way, just to pull it out with your fingers. And there we have it, our battery is out. So we will set that aside and store that properly. And we're ready to install our new battery. So I take the protective film off of the adhesive, make sure our uh, connection is folded properly so that it just has just enough the room to fit between the battery and the motherboard. And then I go ahead and connect the battery. Dave, what's up? Not a brother. Go ahead and stick it in there and then we'll put it back together. Okay, so we've got the battery back in there and it's connected now, so that's dangerous. So the reason I connect it is just to, you know, get the alignment of the flex cable. So to avoid powering the phone back on while it's got a power source, go ahead and connect that again while we put the phone back together. So we just need to put the Taptic engine in here and uh, that's just our three screws. We're basically just reversing the process here. Had them all nice and laid out, so I don't have to guess where they go. It's never a good idea to guess where the screws go. Pop them back in there. And looks like I got them mixed up there. That's the top one. And then we connect our Taptic engine connector back down there. Uh, so connecting these connectors, you just have to get it aligned correctly and then press firmly but gently. And you'll feel a little click. Uh, you don't want to uh, force it. If you're forcing it, it probably means that uh, it's not aligned properly. And you could damage the connectors. So you just want to be very careful. So put our little retainer bracket back in here. This helps hold down uh, the microphone. And okay, there we go. Our screws are back in there. 
So anytime we open up a phone, we want to replace the seal. And so before we do that, we have to completely remove the old seal. Now you have to be very, very uh, accurate with this. So the way I do it is just scrape off and grab it with the end of my tweezers. And you be very, very, very careful because if you slip with these tweezers, uh, you could gouge the motherboard or uh, puncture the battery and have it uh, explode on you. And uh, so you just have to take your time. These little adhesives, like iPhone boogers. Just pull it out. And that way, way we'll have a nice surface to stick our new adhesive onto. A lot of times we just have to scrub it off too with a little isopropyl alcohol because the, uh, especially if the screen's been broken, uh, there'll be dust or whatever stuck to that as well. And you get a new, a good uh, adhesion with the new one. What a nice clean surface. So it's just a lip that goes all the way around there. So it's got a little bit of dust up here. So we'll just clean that off. And let that dry for a second. And grab a new adhesive. So these seals uh, come in different colors depending on what color the phone is. Uh, it's not the most important thing in the world to match the color, but you can see up here the top of this one is white uh, for a white phone. And if you've got a stack of them, like I've got ones for iPhone 10 here, uh, you can kind of match up the holes. So there's little cutouts so they go over the components of the phone here. And you can see this one's got a cutout for the uh, camera. Uh, I think this one might actually be for a six or something, but uh, as long as it's the same size, it's fine. Just match it up there. And so we have to kind of put our battery down a little bit. We're still not gonna connect to the battery, but put the battery down a little bit so that uh, there's room for the protective cover. And so there's a little tab. We just pull the back of the protective cover off and then align it. So what we're gonna do here is just start up in a corner and then press it over on the top, make sure it's nicely aligned. And then we'll just run our fingers down both sides and get a good adhesion with that. So what I do is use the back of my black spudger and uh, press it down in the corners, go up like this on the sides and kind of rub it down and connect, stick the seal down. So we do this with every phone that we work on because uh, our goal is to uh, repair these to uh, basically factory specs as close as we can and uh, that's one of the things that sets us above the rest is our attention to detail and you see like other technicians that uh, cut corners or self-taught or whatever it is or they're just lazy and they don't take these steps well all these things are in here for a reason and we like to just provide our customers the top quality workmanship and service in the industry so now we've got that stuck down and so we're going to gently peel, there's a tab here, we're going to peel up on that and just watch 
as it comes up. So uh, sometimes if you don't have a good adhesion, it'll stay stuck to the protective film and you won't get a complete seal all the way around the phone. So once again, this serves a couple purposes, but the main one is to help give it some uh, water resistance. And so once we stick the screen down, uh, you see there's a lip around there and there's some adhesive stuck on there as well. I'm gonna get that off. Get a nice fresh layer. There we go. And there's some stuff on the bottom still as well. And so we'll peel that off. And we're good to go. So to reconnect the screen, this uh, flex cable is like origami folded uh, and connects over uh, kind of like in an S pattern. And so we're gonna go ahead and uh, this is called the front facing camera flex is what we refer this, to this as, even though there's a bunch of different functions on it, um, FFC for short. And so this is very slightly bendable, uh, just enough to get it over. And so we're gonna align it and then gently push down on it uh, until we feel it click. Uh, once again, if there's any resistance, if you're having a problem, it's probably misaligned and you want to just readjust it. And so we're gonna open it up like this again and connect the digitizer cable first and then the LCD cable. So the LCD cable on these ones is just the, the, the wider one. And go ahead and connect the battery. And at this point with these models, uh, you don't wanna do this with face ID models because um, you could potentially damage the face ID with the phone open. Um, we're gonna go ahead and turn this one on and test it out, make sure it's good to go before we close it. So if uh, by chance we get a faulty battery, which is very, very uh, rare, uh, but does still happen, um, we wanna make sure the phone turns on. Uh, if the phone doesn't turn on uh, immediately by pressing the power button, uh, we just plug it in and uh, that usually gets it to boot up. Uh, if it didn't turn it on at all, uh, that could potentially mean that you damage something or have a bad battery. So we're gonna go ahead and check here in our battery health. And there we go, 100% maximum capacity. So this phone is now good for another two to three years. And so all we have to do now is replace our retainer brackets, putting the screws in the same exact way they came out so that we don't damage anything. And a good method for this is to not completely screw down the first screw first. Uh, that way, if we don't have the bracket aligned with the other screw holes, we can wiggle it around and line that up. And so once we have them both in, we just tighten them down. And once again, that top one is a Phillips triple zero driver. And so these ones on the bottom for the iPhone 7 are tri-wing. And so the way I get those started, I just pinch it in my finger and go ahead and start the screw. These are magnetic uh, drivers. And so it'll hold on to the screw. Uh, if you lose your magnetism, we have a magnetizer and demagnetizer. And so all you have to do to magnetize is go in this side and just transfer some uh, magnetization, I guess you'd say, onto our driver. And then it'll hold the screws for you. So go ahead and once again, I don't have that that top one completely uh, screwed down. 
has, if it's misaligned, I'm going to have problems with the other one. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and screw these down. Now these tri-wings are extremely easy to strip out. Uh, so you just want to make sure you're pressing down uh, with your finger on the top of the driver and just firmly tightening them in there. All right, so now we're ready to close our phone. And so when we close the phone, we start with the top. And so you can see here, there are little hooks on the frame of the screen that uh, go into receivers that are into the housing of the phone. Uh, and then we've got these clips on the side that go into receivers here on the sides of the phone. And so the way that we reinstall the screen is to start from the top at a little bit of an angle. Angle the screen up just a couple degrees. Press that up in there. And then we'll press down on the bottom. And once we've got those aligned, then we can put the sides in. Very nice. And then to get a good seal, all we have to do is press down around the entire perimeter of the screen. And then reinserts our Penelope screwdrivers. I just pinch them and put them in there. And then get my driver and go ahead with our torque on the bottom of this. So now we just take a little microfiber cloth, get some alcohol on it. Clean that off. And I use a super sophisticated way to clean them. Just do it on, the, on your shirt. And if you're doing this for a customer, you hand them back a nice clean phone that, uh, People can hear them when they talk, as we've cleaned out the uh, microphone hole. And then we just test everything out. So we test out the buttons. Those are good. Home button. Cameras, front and back. There we go. And test out the touch functionality of the screen. So to do that, we just drag an icon, an app icon, all around the screen and make sure that doesn't drop from underneath our finger. So if we were doing a screen replacement, uh, this is how we test uh, for de defective touch on a screen. So if there was a defective part on this screen, that app icon would fall from underneath my finger. And uh, sometimes when it does that, it just means that you lifted your finger. Uh, we'll just go all around, swirly swirl, there we go, and that's done. Click the home button to do it. Um, we can open it up, make sure uh, we see Wi-Fi networks, where it's, you know, if it just connects back to the Wi-Fi networks, we're never good. And that's that. I mean, technically, you could open the browser and go to a website that's not cached, like uh, red.com it's like a camera company that nobody really has a reason to go to or disney.com or any website that you don't have like cached in the phone um, and that can show that we're pulling data from wi-fi or or the network so we've got signal up here uh this doesn't have an active sim card in it but we like to test our phones out in front of our customers so there's no confusion if there's you know other problems. We do that before we do repairs as well to uh, try to identify any unknown issues that a customer might not realize. So we just go ahead and make a call. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Pair and yeah, this one's not an active SIM card, so it just goes straight to Verizon. Uh, at this point, we can test the proximity sensor and make sure that that is aligned, uh, but that's more relevant for a screen replacement. So yeah, battery replacement in this. We've got 100% battery health, and this is a 
phone has been given a new life. There we go. If you'd like this done uh, for you, uh, which is highly advisable, uh, we offer service here in the Denver area. Uh, we actually come to you and do it. Um, we quote about half an hour to get it done. Uh, in reality, it, it's it's quicker than that, but we leave uh, some time before and after uh, to, you know, give some helpful advice or, you know, uh, light tech support if you're having any questions or issues. Uh, but yeah, so we charge 65 bucks for this. And so instead of getting a new phone for, you know, four, five, 600, 1400, 1200, whatever it is, uh, you can just get a new battery in your phone for 65 bucks and be good for a couple more years. There you go. Beautiful iPhone 7. This one will be for sale for 150 bucks.